But first, President Trump's withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal was cheered in some quarters and jeered in others, especially inside Iran. The deal was supposed to bring economic benefit, a bounty that hasn't yet arrived. Now, Iranians wonder what's next. From Tehran, special correspondent Reza Seya reports. Anger in Tehran. Much of it aimed at U.S. President Donald Trump. These are Iran's hardliners, the rock rib religious conservatives of the Islamic Revolution. But this is a diverse country, 80 million people, more than half under 40. Among them, college-educated modern youth <laughs> at Tehran's Paradiso Cafe, where goth girls and grunge guys meet to eat. The walls are adorned with rock and roll memorabilia and the air with American music. Mr. Trump doesn't have any fans here either. When you see the world's reaction, you see that he's not a good person. The whole world is against him. For many, Mr. Trump's withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal was the final straw. Today, after two years of negotiations, the agreement signed in 2015 under then-President Barack Obama appeared to peacefully resolve a decades-long nuclear crisis between Iran and the West. The U.S. and world powers agreed to lift economic sanctions against Iran. In return, Iran rolled back its nuclear program, deemed a threat by the West. Ten times, the U.N.'s nuclear watchdog verified Iran's compliance with the agreement. But Mr. Trump said he wanted a better deal to curb what Washington calls Iran's destabilizing activities in the Middle East and its ballistic missile program. And you have to understand there's a lot of mistrust in Iran regarding the United States. Political analyst Hamid Mousavi says Iran will not negotiate a second deal when Washington would not abide by the first. Why not restrict your missiles? Why not open the missile program for inspections? Why no country in the world is under any obligations to have their missiles inspected. Washington says Iran is different. Okay, but we can say the same thing about them, right? I mean, does the United States allow inspections on their military sites? You cannot expect Iran to limit its military programs when Saudi Arabia is buying billions of dollars of arms, which actually the United States is selling to them. I mean, it's, it's not even based on logic. To prevent Iran. The U.S. pullout is a hammer blow to Iranians who hope the deal would both boost Iran's economy and improve relations with the West. It's something that we all knew that at some point Trump is going to pull out of the deal. Navid Yousafian is a Ph.D. student at UC Santa Barbara. Last year, he returned to Tehran to open See You in Iran, a hostel where he says tourists see the real Iran, not the one normally portrayed in Western media. On a U.S. map in the lobby, a note from an American tourist reads, Save the Iran deal. What Mr. Trump did cannot help you in your business. Would no. you agree? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, tourism is like just one part of the economic sector in Iran. I feel like the, the, the effects of this Iran deal exits by Trump is going to affect all different sectors of the economy. Iran's energy sector may be hit hardest, but the country's young high-tech sector is bracing for impact too. You so. can't be smiling because you're happy. Deep down, I'm not happy, but uh, I can't do anything else. Mohammad Reza Azali and Hamed Jafari are co-founders of Tech Rasa, a news site that reports on Iran's tech industry. The two say they launched their site because of interest in Iran's tech scene that followed the nuclear deal. Some of them were Iranians who had lived uh, abroad for 34 years. They're, they were just like, we want to come back here, you know, contribute, help the community here. Azali and Jafari say the impending return of U.S. sanctions hurts. Nevertheless, Iran remains an attractive market. And it's a gold mine. It's the last untapped emerging market. Not everyone here is feeling resilient and defiant. To many Iranians, Mr. Trump's decision was a huge blow. Many here are tired of more bad news, tired of a struggling economy, tired of waiting for things to get better. Some statistics say unemployment is at 40 percent. The cost of living is up. The value of Iranian currency is cratering. 
day by day is more hard. Mojtaba Keshavar sells Persian carpets. New U.S. sanctions will hurt exports, he says, but he doesn't blame Washington for all of Iran's struggles. He says decades of official corruption and oppression by Iran's government are to blame too. Before the revolution, we were drinking on the street and praying at home. Now we pray on the street and we drink at home. You see, this is the change for before. But no hobbies, no, no life. What's the solution? How do things get better? Uh, Should I turn off the mic? <laughs> <laughs> you know very well. I mean, we, we don't have so freedom to talk about everything. And this is not our business. We, I don't care about government. Uh, who want to come, Ahmadinejad, Hatami, who? But they must care about people. The man who has to answer to the people is Hassan Rouhani. The moderate president who promised that a now endangered nuclear deal would deliver a better economy that has yet to arrive. Voters re-elected him last May. This past January, his government faced angry street protests from people fed up by a flatlining economy. And now his stiffest test, how to reassure a restless population, hold back hardline opponents at home and fend off increasingly emboldened enemies abroad. Analyst Saeed Leila says if Iran can get guarantees of oil exports and benefits from Europe, Iran will salvage what's left of the agreement, and Rouhani will keep enough support to rescue his presidency. They will support regime. Be sure. I'm sure about that. They understand the situation. Iran did its best in atomic deal. Their responsibility at the moment is inside of the United States. And you will see that people will support their regime and their, their, their government. But for now, what many Iranians say they won't support is a new round of negotiations with Washington and the Trump administration. Few here are in the mood. I'm Reza Seya for the PBS NewsHour in Tehran.